All these rejections from the middle Bollinger Band. resistance, we're going to need to see here. We get a will look for a healthy tire. I would not don't have the full map to end the long trade. Hey everyone, hope you're doing fantastic. We're going to look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, and Binance. Not a whole lot's been going on in the major names. Binance has had a little bit more volatility. And then at the end, we'll go into story time. People expressed some interest in that dog story. I got plenty of stories from traveling, and hopefully I can inspire people with you know uh, visuals of spots for you to check out on your own and also inspire you to do your own travels. But looking at Bitcoin to start it off, the daily time frame, as we know, the 12-period exponential resistance Four rejections in a row on this daily chart. So still battling this level. The bulls are still holding up on this bounce. We have a new support level on the daily time frame, 65.58, and I'm rounding. But that's the support level the bulls want to maintain. And if we zoom into the four-hour chart, we're still holding this uptrend line. And I like this uptrend line because it's got a lot of uh, solid touches. Certainly a valid uptrend at this point. But we're still in this equilibrium pattern. So at the end of the video yesterday... I said, this is the time frame we're going to be watching. We could very easily stay in this pattern into tomorrow. And here we are well within this pattern and we could stay into this pattern into tomorrow again. So our short-term support is 66.82, the low of this consolidation to this point. But even if we do pull back, as long as the bulls hold 65.58, they are just fine on this four-hour time frame. Our resistance is, you can see we just broke a little bit of a, a pullback bullish, not a ton of follow through. But our resistances are going to be 67.87 and then up to 68.17. So the range is shrinking. As we know, this volatility the last two days is from news, bear news and then bull news. And here is what we get without news. We get low volume, we get low liquidity, little trading opportunity. I haven't even looked at cryptocurrency much today. Canadian MJ is doing its all-time high thing yet again. So that's where my interest has been. But keeping an eye on it. I'm not really going to go aggressively into this cryptocurrency space as a bull until we see a clear daily trend change. And again, that's not going to happen anytime soon. There are small trades to be had here in the meantime, but I see better opportunity elsewhere. So that's where my trading focus is. So hourly time frame, if we want to zoom in that far, honestly, there's probably no need to even zoom in this far, but we can see the clear lower highs did just break with a spike in bull volume. So let's see if the bulls can see a bull MACD cross follow through and shift this momentum back up towards 6,800. One thing I want to note is that on the four-hour time frame, we had a, a pullback here where we did not break the high of the bull news reaction from yesterday. Look at Ethereum. Ethereum on the four-hour time frame did break bullish and saw no follow-through and then pulled back. So you could look at this and say, oh, well, that was a fake out. But if you were watching Bitcoin and aware that Bitcoin had not broken bullish, as we know, the odds that these names that are correlated so strong to Bitcoin doing their own thing and seeing continuation after a break without Bitcoin following, unless there's news involved, it's likely not going to last too long. So it can be a fake out in that scenario. You always want to be watching what Bitcoin is doing as well and noting that even though we broke the high of the bull news reaction, because Bitcoin did not, then we can't be full steam ahead and looking too bullish. So on the daily time frame here, sideways trading, bull still holding higher lows on the daily chart the last few days. So the four hour trend still maintaining an uptrend. And we got a range to be watching. We have our high, our low of the dump on the bear news, high of the follow through on the bull news. And we're trying to form a higher low compared to 516 and 67. Bulls are hoping that 521.50 is our higher low. We haven't gotten enough follow through and enough trend change on the hourly time frame yet to be confident of that. We need to see a higher low and a higher high on the hourly to say, all right, our four hour higher low has been established at this point. So we're closer to a bear break than a bull break at this point for Ethereum. We'll see if that can change. If we get back into the low 530s, then we will be right smack dab in the middle of this range as we head into overnight. And again, we can very easily stay within this range without any news into tomorrow as volume is low and there's not a whole lot going on at all right now. So zooming in on the hourly just to see there, that trend change is what you would be watching along with exponential. Don't forget the exponential support when we held it and then we lose it and then it acts as resistance. So let's see if the bulls are able to get back over that level. It comes into play very often. Let's look at the weekly chart real quick on these two because we are getting close to the end of the week. So on the weekly chart for Bitcoin, it's just an inside bar and we know how to play that. We'll be watching that one into next week. Look at this last time we formed the bounce that saw follow through inside bar bull break. Let's see if we get an inside bar bull break and have us looking back up to the mid 7,000 range on this weekly chart. So look at the volume. 
Volume is non-existent this week. Obviously, we have a couple more trading days to go, three more trading days, so it's only about a little more than halfway through the week. We'll see how that ends up, but as of right now, very low volume. Inside bar in the weekly for Ethereum, it is not exactly an inside bar, almost, but the bounce is following through. Bulls really want this to be our higher low on the weekly time frame, and we will need more follow through to be confident in that. And if it is, then we'll be watching for the potential of some follow through and then a lower high on the weekly and a continued tightening weekly range if we are confident that higher low is formed, which I'm not just yet. I need to see the daily chart with a clear trend change with a higher low and a higher high for me to be confident that our weekly higher low has been established. The exact same thing I just said from the hourly to the four hour time frame is the same as the daily to the weekly time frame. EOS USD. Weekly time frame inside bar, very tight range, volume non-existent. So everybody's in the same boat in that regard. Daily time frame's just straight across at this point. So low of support is down at 1010, and the high of this move so far is up at 1090. So 1010 to 1090 is the current range, six days within this range. So if you're watching EOS or trying to day trade it, it's a snooze fest at this point. The four hour time frame, just back and forth. And those are the two levels. We have broken a couple level, little levels. Like here we had a support of 1019 and we broke down to 1017, no follow through. That's why I'm using the low of consolidation and the high of the last bounce attempt rather than looking at these mini tightening levels because they're so close to each other that I want to use the, uh, the, low, the, the more extreme level. So rather, you know, and that's what I would use for my stop losses as well. Let's say I wanted to exit if four hour higher lows were lost and I see there's a, a support at 1019 and 1017. I'm going to take that extra couple pennies and go below the lower support every time for a scenario exactly like this, where we can trigger one, but the main base and clear must hold support does maintain. So I wouldn't want to be stopped out of that trade in that scenario. I would give the extra couple pennies of loss to put my stop below all of these supports, not just one. So that's where we stand here. Four hour tightening range, same story. Could be into this into tomorrow as well. BNB has its own thing going on, and we're close to a bull break. We did get a bull break of the weekly inside bar, 1720, that double top broke. So pointed out in a recent video, the potential that this is the psychology of an equilibrium, or I should say a cup and handle pattern, where we have our left side of resistance, consolidation, the right side cannot break the left side. We then see healthy consolidation in a bit of a, a bull flag or a handle pattern and then we get continuation so the bulls are trying to get that continuation we broke 1720 we have a bull volume spike we need follow through tomorrow if we can get this break of 1748 the bulls are going to be looking great after 1748 we're looking up at 18 psychological and 19 psychological so there's a lack of price history of resistance and if we can keep this bull volume up and have this amount of volume tomorrow we should see some nice follow through but on the shorter term time frames the four hour chart I would be looking for a, a tightening range here where we have our high, low. So the most important short-term support for me would be 1642. I would expect a lower high here compared to the high of this move of 1738. Because of the amount we pulled back, there's so much range here to see to think that we're going to go straight from that low to a new higher high without increasing bull volume. It's not likely. So we're likely to set a lower high, maybe this candlestick, and then pull back and form a higher low compared to 1642 and see a tightening range into tonight. So tightening range is everywhere, but BNB is definitely the most bullish out of everybody and watching to see if we can get this clear break of resistance that would be a bit of a green light and you will see another spike in bull volume if we do get that break in my opinion and we'll be looking for traders to see that follow through. So overall, not a whole lot has changed since yesterday in the major names and we're going to be watching for that change into this weekend and that's going to determine the shape of this weekly candlestick because we will break these four hour ranges before Sunday. And if it's a bear break, that weekly candlestick is going to be looking pretty weak. And if it's a bull break, then we'll be looking at the potential for continuation into next week. So that's that. I hope you all continue to do good things. I'm going to stop from the do good thing. Ever since we started crypto videos now, it's been what, 14 months of almost every day and started with the the farm clips had those at the end of the videos then we did the do good things routine now we're going to do story time for a while just a week or two but to go over my road trip and again i want to highlight some of these awesome places for you guys to check out so we'll start it off seven years ago when i was fresh out of college and organized a road trip and said you know to my buddies who's coming and i was just taking my honda civic packing my entire life in it and ended up with two of my buddies that were younger than me that I grew up with playing wiffle ball and, you know, just down the road 
and found out a week or two before we left that they had never been camping before. And I did not know that when I extended the invitation. So I was the leader of the, the expedition, teaching them everything that they've, like, they didn't know how to start a fire. They didn't know anything. And so it was a lot of fun in that regard, you know, seeing their minds get blown on a daily basis. But we all lived out of the Honda Civic. We would obviously camp every night, but a lot of free camping, a lot of uh, woofing around, like I said, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. But uh, these are my buddies. That's us in a, a bear box hanging out. And uh, so we let's start it off with Yellowstone. This was the third time I've been to Yellowstone. I've been four times now, but what took them to Yellowstone? We started in North Carolina. We went, ended up going for four months and 10,000 plus miles. I drove the entire way. I don't know what was going through my head, but we were in this packed, tiny little Honda Civic and uh, going to national parks. So we started on the East Coast, North Carolina, and we went up to Yellowstone and then the Redwoods and then curled down the coast and then cut across and went through Texas and North uh, New Mexico and all the way down. So we'll pick it up when we were in Yellowstone. That was probably one of the first major highlights. And uh, there we are by a waterfall. But a couple stories happened in Yellowstone. The first one being a good example of something that you can talk about with trading, which is learning from your mistakes. And that's something that happens when you are traveling. You're going to learn from your mistakes, right? How often do you live out of your car? And uh, it's definitely a learning experience. And you don't like get better at it until you have these failures. And that's the same thing with trading. No matter how many times I say to somebody, you know, we have to use stop losses, they're not going to use a stop loss and they're going to get burned and they're going to feel it. And then it's going to stick. They have to experience it for it to stick with them, for it to be a lesson that they learn. So that happens all the time. And I have fully accepted that that's going to be the case for the majority of people. But it's the same with road tripping as well. So we were in Yellowstone. It was still early spring. You can see my rock and sweater. But I got my hat. I got multiple sweatshirts on. So it got really cold at night in Yellowstone. And we left in the spring. By the time we got to Yellowstone, it was probably around May or June. But it was getting down below freezing at night. So there was one instance where we hiked in. There's a, a bison there. I'm not too close. Don't worry. I'm not an idiot. And I could have been up that tree in two minutes. Don't get close to bison. They will mess you up. Um, but I was. we hiked into this spot, maybe three miles in, and set up camp. And it was getting dark. And it was going to be, you know, below freezing that night, maybe below 30 degrees. And I realized I didn't bring my sleeping bag. I left it in the car. So we're three miles away from the car. It's about to get to freezing. I only have my clothes with me. And I say, all right, there's two ways I can do this. I can go back now or I can just give it a shot. So I just said, you know, forget it. I'm going to sleep. Gave it a shot. Woke up in the middle of the night, of course, on the ground freezing. And that's another thing. Buy a uh, good sleeping pad. I was using this $10 army mat sleeping pad that was you might as well have been sleeping on the ground i learned that lesson really quickly doesn't always pay to do it the cheap way so anyways woke up in the middle of the night and realized i have to hike back right now three miles to the car because i don't feel like i'm going to survive i probably would have but it was going to be a terrible night so had to walk through bear country in the middle of the night and just ended up singing the entire way so that they could hear me coming so i wouldn't you know sneak up on a bear and surprise it and at the end of it, you know, I, it wasn't too big a deal. Three miles. Uh, it was kind of an adventure. I had a flashlight with me, went by myself. But at the end of it, there was a bridge right before getting to the parking lot where the car was over a river. And on the post of that bridge was a, a giant snow owl. And it was the most magnificent bird I've ever seen in my life. And as I walked up to it, it just turned and looked at me and then uh, spread its wings and swooped over the river. And it was just a very clear, like, oh, that's that's why this happened. So I could see that. But uh, yeah, didn't have a too negative a mindset and embraced the situation that I was in and laughed about it. And uh, definitely learned to always check that you have your sleeping bag with you. So in tomorrow, we'll talk about uh, an experience in Yellowstone again. Or right, well, let's just talk about it now. There was another morning where we woke up and had to sleep around the fire because it was so cold. And the bison were just walking right through our camp, literally almost stepping on us. And uh, it was right when the sun rose and I looked off in the distance and I heard this, this calling, this, it ended up being elks, which, you know, I wasn't aware of the sound that they made, but they were talking to each other and it sounds almost like a horn, but they were off in the distance. And I saw this herd of elk run up and up, up a hill and into the woods and disappear. And then about a minute or two later, I saw a pack of wolves circle around 
and they were you know clearly following them and and some of them went up and some of them circled around to try and flank them on the other side but that was an incredible experience to just wake up uh and again backcountry camping in in national parks is extremely cheap and it's a great way to travel and see things if you don't mind roughing it and just get a good sleeping mat is the bottom line so we'll go over a little bit of yosemite and some other travels the redwoods an incredible spot and then I did a seven month road trip by myself after that, where I have a whole bunch more stories, but go to Yellowstone. That's my favorite national park out of all of them. Like I said, I've been four times and I will be back again. You could go 40 times and still have a whole bunch of stuff to see. But the first road trip I ever went on, we drove 36 hours straight in college to Yellowstone and the amount of mistakes that we made, we did not bring enough food. We were going, you know, eight days into the back country and we were starving by the end of it and it was just we had we were bringing like ramen noodles with absolutely no nutritional value because they were lightweight but we we had four of us sleeping in this four person tent so we were literally like cigars in a cigar box not able to move and it was just a ton of mistakes so learn from your mistakes you have to feel the pain to have that memory stick and not ever do it again and that's the connection to trading I appreciate you all. Continue to do good things out there. We'll see you tomorrow.